Good morning. Greetings to all of you and welcome here to Zion Lutheran Church. Uh, it's a joy to be here with you in God's house this morning. Uh, our special service this morning focuses on Christ the King and it is also a communion service uh, for those of you who are either members here or members in fellowship with us at a different uh, congregation like Trinity. Uh, you're certainly invited to join us. If you're not a member of one of our churches, then I ask you to please refrain from coming forward during communion. Uh, we do practice what we call close communion. Uh, so please, if you're not a member of one of our churches, please remain in your seat at that time. God bless us graciously with his presence as we begin our worship in his name. We're going to start off our, with our opening hymn, 243. Please rise. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We pray. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord, O Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirit. You make us pure and holy in your sight. Spare your only Son, but gave him up for us all. O oh Lord, our oh Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. O oh Son of God, eternal Word of the Father, you came to live with us, you made your Father known. You washed us from our sins in your own blood. You are the King of glory. You are the Lord. O oh Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Again, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your victory, you have broken the power of the evil one. Fill our hearts with joy and peace as we look with hope to that day when every creature in heaven and earth will acclaim you King of kings and Lord of lords to your unending praise and glory. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson this morning is from Daniel chapter 7. It reads, I kept watching the night visions, and there, in the clouds of heaven, I saw one like a son of man coming. He came to the Ancient of Days, and he was brought before him. To him was given dominion, honor, and a kingdom. All peoples, nations, and languages will worship him. His dominion is an eternal dominion 
that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will not be destroyed. This is the word of our Lord. I now invite forward the ILES first and second graders to sing. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Alleluia. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel this morning, according to St. John, chapter 18. Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus. He asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Are you saying this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. You are a king then, Pilate asked. Jesus answered, I am, as you say, a king. For this reason I was born, and for this reason I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the gospel of our Lord.
Please now be seated for our hymn of the day, 341. Grace and mercy and peace are yours. It all comes to us from God our Father and through his only Son and our only Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That word of God to which we direct and focus our attention is found for us in the Revelation of John, chapter 1. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is God's word. We pray, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer, amen. Dear fellow redeemed, brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus our Lord, we are not really a people 
familiar with the concept of there being a monarchy, a king, a dictator. We live in a country that for centuries has had three branches of government so as to be accountable and balanced in its rule. A judicial branch, the legislative branch, and indeed the executive branch. And we even don't really have examples too much so in the world in which we live. We do recall that in the Old Testament, there was a time where God's people came to their last judge. You recall that after Moses and Joshua passed, God allowed for his Old Testament people to have judges uh, to be kind of a governor or uh, manager, I guess you could say, of the people. And then Samuel, who is really known to be the last judge, was prepping his own sons to take over after him. And this is what we are told in 1 Samuel 8. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us such as all the other nations have. And so there was a desire on the part of God's Old Testament people to have kings. And we know that that first king was Saul and then David and Solomon. Samuel felt offended and hurt when they did no, no longer want judges but a king. And God told Samuel, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. He granted them that wish, and they had their kings. And yet throughout the history of the world where there have been kings and dictators and rulers and a monarchy, there have been no examples of a benevolent king a benevolent dictator. Defined as such, and you can even Google the term benevolent dictator or ruler, as one who rules only in the interests of the people, not in his own personal interests, but in the interests and for the good of the people that he rules over. We live in a, a sin-polluted world where we're just simply not going to find those examples now or in the history of the world. And yet you and I, as followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, have the wonderful benefit and the wonderful understanding, the privilege of knowing that we have a Savior who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and who makes clear to us that when he came, he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. His whole mission was about us, about people about seeking to save that which was lost. And so I want us to leave here today from God's word with that clear understanding that everything you need in a king, you already have. You already possess it. You can already embrace it. So true is that reign of our Savior and Lord, King Jesus. And so there's four points that I think our text, and I, I see that our text really addresses as to those needs that are before us. First, we need to be loved and watched over. Many would say that embracing love, knowing that you are loved, is one of the most basic needs of every human being. And indeed, our text makes that clear for us. When it says in, in verse 5, and I realize your, your, your text doesn't, it doesn't have the verses before you, but you'll, you'll see it in the middle of the reading. To him who loves us. It's referring to Jesus. He loves us, and, and you and I know that love has to be more than words because words can become empty. If words are not followed up by action, we just don't have that confirmation and that assurance that cements for us that I am loved. But our Savior Jesus does. He gives us that assurance. One of the examples that uh, stands out for me is right before Jesus ascends into heaven, and he tells his disciples and reminds his disciples that he has absolute rule. He simply words it this way, all authority and in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then a couple of verses later, he reminds them, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. There's a great paradox here. <laughs> that
that, that our Lord, before he ascends into heaven, he reminds us that he ascends into heaven. He seems to leave us. He seems to ascend into heaven. Indeed, as the King of kings and Lord of lords with all authority, so that he can be with us wherever we are. He's with us now. We're two or three gathered together in his name. And he's with us individually as we leave, as he so promised. Yes, the King of Kings, King Jesus, he fulfills that need to be loved, to be watched over. We also recognize that we have a need to be set free from the guilt of sin. And maybe some would put this first. Um, this is in no particular order, but it's clear in our text that that's one of the, the accomplishments, a clear accomplishment of our Lord Jesus Christ, King Jesus. For we are told, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. There is no greater gift that you and I have this side of heaven than the assurance that the slate is clean. The assurance that God's grace abounds. So much so that he does, as the opening words of our text actually tell us, grace and peace to you. First comes grace, then comes peace. You see, God's love and the erasing of that sin, casting it away as far as the east is from the west, is not something we've done. Uh, it's not because of something we've done. To lay on the table, so to speak, and say, God, I've done this for you. I've, I've done my best. I've had great intentions. I'm somewhat attractive to you because I, I, really, I really try. I try really hard. It's not good enough. Our God says, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Be holy as your Father in heaven is holy. And we fail. And so there's nothing more precious than knowing that we have the forgiveness of sins. And as Luther reminds us again and again in his writings on the basis of God's word, where there is the forgiveness of sins, there is also life, new life in Christ and eternal life with him in heaven. It is the ticket, it is the pass that gives us entrance into God's heaven. A third of our needs, we need victory over death and hell. We are reminded only too well each and every day of our lives that we are mortal, that life is fragile, that any number of things can happen where we don't see tomorrow. We are weak, but he is strong. And we need that victory over death and hell. And so our text actually goes on to remind, remind us, actually earlier in the text of verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. He is the firstborn. He's not the only born. He's not the last born. He is the firstborn. Reminiscent of those words of Paul in his letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, when he tells us, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. He is the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. We are granted that awesome privilege, that awesome confidence and assurance in the fact that Jesus did come and did die and did rise again and numerous times also raised the dead to assure you and me that it will happen and that really we are journeying here on earth like people who live in tents. Our permanent dwelling is in heaven and we are just pilgrims here for a very short time, even if you get to live to be 100. It's a short life. Compare it to the eternity that God has in store for us. Yes, what comfort did we have in knowing that King Jesus truly does give us everything that we need. And our final point here, we need to be in an everlasting kingdom. It's not good enough that our King Jesus has a four-year term or two terms or three terms 
of rain, or that his reign is somehow finite to just a certain parameters, certain boundaries, certain borders, but that we have King Jesus who reigns all for us. And our text holds that out for us as well. As, he remind, as John reminds us, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. And also reminding us, in the words of Jesus, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. It is the last great I am that is recorded for us in the scriptures. And those I am's emphasize that as true as it was when John penned these words, it is true today. He is the beginning and the end. He is forever. And he ushers you in, into that circle, into that family. You are privileged to be one of those adopted children in the family of God through holy baptism and clinging faith in Jesus, now and forever. You see, Jesus' reign isn't just sometime in the future. It's now. And by your faith, he already reassures us and really comforts us in that truth that he already sees us with him. He already perceives that we are there with him, as he tells us in uh, Ephesians chapter 2. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In God's eye, in, in God's way of seeing that there is no time, but only eternity, he already sees you with him at his side in heaven. How comforting and how reassuring that is. And certainly, as we venture into, this is the last Sunday of the church year, next Sunday being the first Sunday of, uh, of Advent, the new church year. During that time, we'll again be reminded of how our Savior came that first time in a lowly way, born of the Virgin Mary in poverty, and that the angel Gabriel came to, to, to the Virgin Mary and reminded her that Jesus' name would be Jesus and that he will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. God help us to embrace that comfort those needs that we could not generate, those needs that we could not find anywhere else other than in King Jesus, those accomplished facts that are yours to embrace, to know, to hold, and to share. For you are also reminded in our text that that work is our work. Verse 6 says, he has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. Our greatest service to him is to tell others about him. I wonder if you've ever heard this legend. And it, it probably is a, a fair illustration. It's certainly not uh, something you'll find in the scriptures. But this legend that as Jesus ascends into heaven, he is greeted by the angel Gabriel who confronts Jesus, or comes before Jesus, I should say, and simply asks, now that you've saved these people from their wretchedness of sin and from their, their, their trajectory to hell and put them on a road to heaven, how are you going to get that message out? And Jesus said, well, I have these followers. I have these disciples, Peter, James, John, and other friends. That they're going to share that word. And the angel says, well, okay, well, what if the people they tell don't tell the next generation? What if it stops? What if it gets lost? The message gets lost. What's plan B? Jesus says there is no plan B. And you and I know that God's plan is working. Otherwise, you and I wouldn't be here right now, would we? We wouldn't be in this house of worship. We wouldn't know our Savior Christ if the generations before us had not shared that wonderful message with us. And how compelling it is then for us to be, as our text says, those priests, those messengers, to tell the next generation. God help us to, to celebrate 
what we know to be true, that everything you need in a king, you already have. And that King Jesus, he rules, he governs, he directs. You know, the, what did Shakespeare say? All, all men and women are, all the world's a stage and all the men and women are merely players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. But there's a director in this world and that is King Jesus. With his kingdom of power, he rules all things for our good. There are times where we wonder, why are you letting this happen, God? Why are you letting this happen in my life? He reminds us we are dependent on King Jesus. We need him. We need to go to him. We need to trust in him. We need to look beyond the brevity of this life to the eternity he has in store for us. So that kingdom of power is very real. He's able to do all things and does all things for our good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. He has a kingdom of grace. And that kingdom of grace is yours at your baptism when you were adopted into his family. You are in that kingdom of grace now. And the kingdom that yet awaits us is that kingdom of glory, the church triumphant. And you and I know people there already. And we can look forward to seeing them in God's time. Until then, God help us to be his servants, to be his ministers, to be his priests, to bring more people along with us to that kingdom of glory. Knowing that we have a king who is not a small king, but a great and powerful king and a loving king, a forgiving king. Everything you need in a king, you already have. Praise King Jesus. Amen. Please rise as we uh, continue with the confession of our faith. We do that with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we gather our thank offerings. Uh, I would remind you also, if you have time, or to take the time, I should say, to put your name on the Friendship Register located towards the center aisle.
We bow our heads together in prayer. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. You are worthy, O Christ our King, to receive honor and glory and praise, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Alleluia, for our God, Lord God Almighty reigns. You are worthy, O Christ our King, to receive honor and glory and praise because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased us for God. From every tribe and language and people and nation, you have called us into your kingdom and have made us priests to serve you, our God and Father. Help us live as royal priests. We give thanks to you, O Christ, our shepherd king, because you have searched for us and found us. Lead us to the green pastures and quiet waters of your saving love, so that we may enjoy peace and comfort for our souls. Heal our hearts when they are broken with sin and guilt. Strengthen us when we are weak. We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. Come with your mighty power to break and defeat every evil plan and purpose of the devil, of the ungodly influences and ideas of the world, and of our own sinful nature. Use your power to calm the unrest among nations and peoples so that your kingdom may spread and grow. Strengthen our confidence in knowing that your kingdom will never be destroyed. O Christ our King, you have supremacy over all. You will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. You have destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Reign in our hearts that we may serve you more faithfully and speak more boldly to others of your saving love. Praise be to the Lord God, who alone does marvelous deeds. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Lord, we praise you for giving 60 years of marriage to Bob and Flo Wagner. We thank you for your continued grace to them as they love and serve each other. May their marriage also serve to be a model for others of Christian love and sacrifice. Thank you for your gifts of love, marriage, and family. Lord, we also pray on behalf of Kim Kotecki, whom you have called to your side in heavenly glory. We thank you that you have taken her out of this world of trouble, pain, and death, and into her heavenly home of joy, peace, and rest. Be with her family and friends, especially at this time of loss, and use us, equipped with your truth, to comfort others with our hope in Christ. Give us confidence in your life and resurrection. Lord, we also pray on behalf of Marge Fry, who's now returned from the hospital. Lord, we ask that you would give, you, give her continued strength and healing by your grace. Hear us now, Lord, as we now bring you our private petitions. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever, King of kings and Lord of lords. The Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. Amen. And we pray the prayer Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He protects and preserves his church in every age and gives us confidence to lift up our heads and watch for Jesus with joy. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please now be seated for our closing hymn, 216.
Greetings to all of you again in the name of Christ our Lord. I have a several announcements for you this morning. The first is um, we have um, Illinois Lutheran Schools has called several teachers to serve. First, we have called Scott Stevenson as an elementary school principal. He is currently serving at Pilgrim Lutheran School in Mesa, Arizona. Also, Ellen Stevenson to teach kindergarten, currently serving at Pilgrim Lutheran School in Mesa, Arizona. We have called Paul Hoffman to serve as a science, and, a science teacher and technology director. He is currently serving at St. Paul Lutheran School in Appleton, Wisconsin. And Stephen Strong called the church called to teach chemistry and physics, currently serving at First Lutheran School in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Please keep these, these, uh, these uh, gospel ministers in your prayers as they consider these opportunities to serve. I also want to let you know about the, uh, the funeral for uh, Kim Katecki. Uh, the visitation will be at Stager Memorial Chapel tomorrow from 3 to 8. And then on Tuesday morning, there will also be a visitation here at Zion from 10 to 11 a.m. And then the funeral will follow at 11 a.m. on Tuesday, uh, again here. Uh, please keep that in mind if you're, if you're um, wanting to come and, and, and pay your respects that way. I also want you to know that we have Thanksgiving worship coming up this week, and that will be on Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m. as well as Thursday, Thanksgiving Day at 9 a.m. You can pick one or the other. They are going to be the same service, but two different ways to um, set aside some particular time to give God thanks together. And finally, I want, I want to uh, keep in your minds the live nativity and also um, the parade coming up on December 4th. If you are considering helping us out with that, if you're going to be able to in any way, um, whether playing a character or walking the parade, or there's many different things we're going to be doing. Um, there are a couple of sign-up sheets in the back. I would like to know who we're looking for for those events. Please sign up so that we have a, a better idea as we plan those events, uh, how we can properly, um, properly arrange everything for you. So uh, please consider helping. Uh, we're looking for uh, a couple of hours. If, if you're looking for the live nativity event, there'll be a couple hours worth of service we're looking for. And then the parade, again, that's maybe an hour and a half or so of service we're looking for that same uh, evening. Uh, and oh, and finally, the, the one by one Bible study I want to uh, let you know about. This morning, if you're going to be able to stick around, please do for our new Sunday morning Bible class. And that will be a study on personal witnessing. And it's going to be focusing on how every believer has a role to play in witnessing to, to others about Christ. So it's going to be a great study, and today it kicks off. So if you can be here, please don't miss it. God, God's grace go with you throughout your week.